Thousands are expected to march for science tomorrow in Washington, D.C. and over 500 cities around the world. Organizers say the event is meant to defend the vital role science plays in society. Join us now is Dr. Stephen Meyer, director of the Center for Science and Culture at the Discovery Institute, a nonpartisan research organization. Stephen, thanks for being with us. The March for Science has stirred up some public debate about the role of science and policy in particular. Some critics say it's very partisan, a very anti-Trump event. What do you have to say about this? We'd march? be among those criticisms, uh, critics. Uh, many of the propositions that the marchers are marching for aren't really strictly speaking science, they're political extensions of particular scientific points of view. For example, many of the marchers are opposed to the Keystone Pipeline or opposed to budget cuts in federal regulatory agencies like the EPA. These aren't scientific propositions or findings, these are political positions. Similarly, a lot of the marchers are, again, are uh, motivated by secular humanism. There's a number of five, six or seven secular humanist groups sponsoring the march. Their view is that science properly understood undermines belief in God or makes it unnecessary. That's again not a scientific proposition but a philosophical or theological idea. And so equating science with either political or philosophical ideas as and then claiming that that is science is I think um, a counterproductive to the cause of science. You're an expert in what's called intelligent design and tell me a little bit about what that means because I'm Sometimes yeah. he's, he's, Intelli he's well, intelligent design is the idea that there are certain features of the, of the biological world and of the universe itself that point to the reality of a designing intelligence and the origin of the universe and the origin of life. Um, it uh, relates to the ancient design argument of, uh, of uh, philosophers and theologians from the Middle Ages and in the period of the scientific revolution. It's in a way updating that design argument in light of modern scientific discoveries like the discovery of little tiny nano machines inside cells and the digital code that is in the DNA molecule. Our local hero out in Seattle, Bill Gates, says the DNA is like a software program only much more complex than any we've ever devised. We know from experience, from our uniform and repeated experience, the basis of all scientific reasoning, that information, in, especially in a digital form, always comes from an intelligent source. So the discovery of information at the foundation of life, at the foundation of every cell and every organism, uh, we think points powerfully to a designing intelligence having played a role in the origin of life. Well, as you know, Stephen, everybody seems to have a different opinion on this and unique takes on how the world came into existence, how humans came into existence. But you say, regardless of just the perspectives, there are certain ones that are simply not welcome in this march. As you were saying before, this is a very, seems to be a very politically motivated march. But what perspectives are excluded? Well, any perspective that's critical of contemporary Darwinian theory, sometimes known as neo-Darwinism, and this is very odd because at precisely the time when you have these very public claims of consensus and settled science in support of Darwinian theory, much as you do with the in the global warming controversy, you have leading biologists and even leading evolutionary biologists now rejecting the central claim of neo-Darwinism, which is that natural selection and random mutation has the creative power to generate all the major new innovations that we see in the history of life in the fossil record. Natural selection and random mutation does a good job of explaining small-scale variation, but not large-scale innovation. One, one biologist says it does a good job of explaining the survival, but not the arrival of the fittest. So lots of leading people in the mm -hmm. field rejecting the standard textbook theory, but you won't br get a word of that breathed at the March for Science. It's an ideological um, uh, approach to science saying we all have to line up and get behind this one particular viewpoint even though there are many dissenting viewpoints in science that are being systematically excluded. Dr. Stephen Meyer, director for the Center at, in Science and Culture at Discovery Institute, thanks so much for explaining this. Thanks for having me on, Wyatt.